<laughs> this is a journey into sound. A journey which along the way will bring to you new color, new dimension, new value. And a new experience. Welcome to the G-Spot Podcast. I'm your guide, Katie Silcox, bringing you your weekly self-love sound bite. Join us for conversations around sex, spirit, and all things self-care. All things self-care. All things spirit. This is a journey into sound. Into sound. Into sound. Into sound. everybody welcome to the Gee spot we are here today talking about one of my favorite topics one of the core practices of my spiritual life the first yoga the teachings proclaim is the yoga of food sadhana our relationship to food no matter how much we want to give up food, want to avoid food. Unlike any other addiction, alcohol, drugs, even sex, things can be given up, but not food. Without it, we aren't going to make it. For some reason, the divine unfolding reality wants us to have a balanced, loving relationship to what we put in our mouths. And if you're like me, that's not always easy. So Ayurvedic cleansing detox protocols are really important, especially if your relationship to food hasn't always been perfectly balanced, which in our day and age is actually really rare to meet someone where it is. So what does it mean to detox from an Ayurvedic perspective? In this understanding we aren't going on any kind of crazy cleanse we're not going on any kind of fasting although those approaches can sometimes be helpful most of the time what most of us need is something more gentle something that um, enables the body to actually deeply be at ease and relax and so one of the core principles of ayurvedic detox is that your body needs to know that you are going to create a sacred time and space to chill out, to step out of the rat race that is life, and to deeply step into the parasympathetic nervous system. And this is why in Ayurvedic cleansing, getting massages and oiling your body with warm medicated oils was always a huge part of the cleanse protocol. Why? Because when you had someone else put their hands on you in a loving way and slowly rub your body in warm medicated oil, it was very easy for the body to enter into a parasympathetic nervous system state. And the body requires, in order to do the deepest level of cleansing, the body requires itself to be in a parasympathetic nervous system state. When the body's in that go, go, go mode, your body is not going to relax enough to release the toxins out of deeper layers of tissue and organ systems. And so one of the first important things that I want everyone out there listening to to know that may be a different approach to cleansing is that you need to be warm and wet and unctuous and oily if you want to cleanse deeply. So, We have this idea in our culture that cleansing must be about suffering and penance and purification. Um, But really what Ayurvedic cleansing is about and what makes it so special and so effective, so incredibly effective, is that it's not about purification or punishment or penance. It's about sweetness and love and slowing down and really saying to your body, body, I am going to let you do what you need to do in order to come into balance rather than the mind dictating um, and kind of using you as a vehicle to um, 
promulgate the goals of the mind. I'm going to let the body be in charge. The body must be nourished. The body must be softened. The body needs to be in a state of ease in order to cleanse and in order to heal anything that may be wounded or or broken inside of us. So cleansing from an Ayurvedic perspective is very much a spiritual practice. It's about stopping, thinking about what our priorities are in life, in this sacred life that we have. How do I want to spend this life? It's about entering into an emptiness, turning off the distractions, stopping the momentum of our life and being in what can be a very, very scary place. And that is the place of not doing. I've done cleanses many times in my life. And the most recent cleanse that I did, I was able and fortunate enough to go away and spend a couple of weeks in Hawaii doing the cleanse. And it does sound very beautiful and luxurious, but it was one of the hardest things I've ever done to to really just turn off all social media, to turn off my business, to turn off my relationships, and to go into that empty, dark womb space. But it's from that empty, dark space, that creating space, that a lot of old wounds and old memories and even ancestral patterns from my mother and my grandmother could be processed and and felt and let go of. And that was a painful experience. But the only reason I was able to do that is because I was creating that space and in a place with people who were supporting me along that journey. And so if you can go away and have someone else make your food and get some really good body work and some shamanic work and some psychotherapy work or whatever healing modality feels right, that that's really, really, really helpful. But I suspect that many of you listening to this may not be able to do that. And by all means, you can still do an Ayurvedic cleanse protocol, which I'm going to get to some of the practicalities of well, what does that look like from, from if I'm just doing it out of my home? Um, Being in the pause that a cleanse can create, it's like a miniature death. It's like a part of us that we've really identified with. For me, I'm, I, I got to realize, oh, I'm, I'm very identified with the part of me that's a writer and the part of me that's a business person and the part of me that's a teacher and the part of me that's a lover and the part of me that likes to go to the gym and work out and all these different little aspects of my life that are really cool and really healthy, but how attached am I to them? What happens when I don't have those things to do every day? And so this part of me that isn't those things got to be experienced. This indomitable Shakti that we have, this power that we have that wants to do and create um, must trust and be tempered by the And part of our being that is just effortlessly witnessing the part of us that can be at rest. In Tantra, there's this idea of our becoming and our being. And many of us, especially in the Western world, are so identified with the becoming, the becoming, the becoming. What am I going to do? What am I going to become? What am I going to manifest? And that's a beautiful part of who we are, and we must celebrate it and feed it. But it becomes actually diseased if we only live in that realm. And so we also must step into the part of us that's just being. There is no becoming. It just is. And if we only live in that becoming, we run the risk of, well, quite frankly, just burning out of exhausting ourselves. And so from an Ayurvedic perspective, cleansing is about your spirit feeling like everything else can finally let go and we make space for something to drop down into us called grace, called revelation, called insight. I think about Jesus Christ going out into the desert and fasting and praying for 40 days 
I think about the Buddha sitting under the Bodhi tree and only having a little begging bowl that maybe a generous woman would come and fill up for him as he prayed and meditated. I think about these endless myths and stories of great beings who used cleansing as a method for touching into the sacred. I love this idea that a cleanse can also be done without having to run off to the desert (laughs) or to Hawaii, as it were, for me. And I know that many of you listening have children, you have jobs, you maybe, maybe you can go. And, and I do encourage you to craft time into your calendar where you can go. But if you can't, I want you to know that this cleanse is equally available for you. Cleansing is best done during the fall season and the spring season. And this is when the body and nature is naturally cleansing itself. The cleanse basically looks like something of a mono diet. In traditional Ayurvedic cleansing, you would be eating the same thing for every meal. And it's a dish called kitchari. And I'm going to give you guys some links in the show notes to a PDF that you can download from one of my favorite companies that I work with um, that maps out the cleanse protocol for you. So make sure to, to click on that in the show notes. And I'm also going to give you the link to just some really good products that I use when I'm doing my cleanse. So feasibly, you could start this cleanse immediately. I'm going to give you everything you need, the protocol, and even some links to some great products that you can buy that will support you in that. You don't have to buy these products. I'm going to tell you what they are and you can buy them anywhere, but these are the products that I love and that I use and that I trust. Um, And so I'm trying to make it super easy for you guys to to start it as soon as possible if you do want to cleanse. So a mono diet that consists of mung beans, usually split mung. You can also use whole mung if you soak them really well. Split mung are are beautiful. They look, they're also known as sunshine beans or sunshine mung. And basmati rice. Basmati rice cooked with mung beans together make a sort of, depending on how you make it, you can make it watery or you can make it thick, but it makes something like a, 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 a thick comfort food porridge. Um, To me, I never get tired of it. It's it's like a mushy, it it reminds me a little bit of mashed potatoes or like a healthy macaroni and cheese kind of situation. So it's really comfort food. It's Ayurvedic comfort food, but it's incredibly easy to digest. And it's very cleansing. The mung bean actually has the capacity to scrape the intestines of gunk. Um, You also take um, Ayurvedic cleanses, use a lot of oils, both outside of your body and inside of your body. And so we recommend using ghee when you cook and any spice you like really, as well as oil outside of your body. And so if you were going to do this cleanse, you would essentially eat this kitchari that we'll give you a recipe for in the show notes and ghee that we will also give you some links if you don't know what ghee is uh, in the show notes as well. Um, You would also choose three or four or five, but no more than that, vegetables that you are going to eat. And I would recommend if it's fall that you may choose some more fall vegetables seasonally. And if it's spring that you choose some more local seasonal spring veggies. And you would eat those vegetables as well as the kitchari for every meal with a little bit of ghee. And that's your life. That's your reality. And what happens is that your body, because you're feeding it a mono diet over a few days, your body begins to adjust and know what's coming with every meal. Your body doesn't have to work hard because you're not eating different things all the time. And so this mono diet enables the body to spend less of its energy on digestion and more of its energy on detoxification of the organs. The other thing I highly recommend is dry brushing your skin while you're doing the cleanse. And so 
if it were me, I would maybe give myself a little 15 or 20 minute um, oil massage, as well as before that, I would dry brush the skin. So you just get all of the lymph moving with the dry brushing and the massage, but with the massage, you also activate the parasympathetic nervous system, which helps your body let go and cleanse. And it also activates the valve system, which are these pumps located in your diaphragm. The pelvic floor has a pump. Your heart is a pump. And you even have a pump at the tongue and the base of the skull. And when we cleanse, we want to also activate the valve system. By massaging your body, you help that valve system turn on and your metabolism increase. Another thing that I recommend is taking some triphala herb or any colon cleansing herb, but triphala is the one that I recommend, and I'll give you guys a link for that herb. And I would say um, just to follow the, the instructions on, on the bottle or the bag of triphala in terms of how much. In general, you'd take about a teaspoon or half a teaspoon um, three times a day. Triphala is a really innocuous herb. Most everyone can take it. There aren't that many counterindications for it. If you are pregnant, I wouldn't recommend doing a cleanse. When we're pregnant, we want to keep everything in. We don't want to move anything out. Just a side note. Um, In terms of drinking water, about half a cup of warm or hot water every hour is, is, is pretty much great. Um, you actually don't want to drink over drink, which puts out your digestive fire. The other thing that I recommend while you're cleansing is to have, um, a journal and really use that time to pour out emotionally anything that's going on. Just let your feelings and thoughts flow. Baths are really good. Epsom salt baths are really great during an Ayurvedic cleanse and just help pull things out of the body. During a cleanse, you want to reduce the amount of exercise that you're doing. A little bit of a walk might be okay, but if you're deeply cleansing, you actually want to reduce the amount of exercise. So, Basically, you wake up in the morning in, on, on your cleanse and you scrape your tongue and you maybe take in a little bit of warm lemon water and then you massage your body for about 20 minutes in warm oil and then you sit and maybe journal or meditate for a while and then you have your triphala herb. You can take it first thing as well and then you maybe a few minutes, 15, 20 minutes later, you have a little bit of kitchery with ghee. And then you go about your day and same thing for lunch. You're going to have kitchery with vegetables and ghee. And then you go about your day relaxing, doing your work if you are working. And then at night, you could maybe do a nice hot bath with some essential oils and some Epsom salts. And then you would take the triphala again on an empty stomach before bed. So you can have three meals a day. They're always the same. And then you're adding in triphala as well as triphala three times a day is is fine. You can also just do it twice. Whatever you feel is a little bit more appropriate for you. And that's really how the day goes during the cleanse. What we didn't talk about is how to prepare for this and how to come off of it. How to prepare for it and how to come off of it are just as important as actually being on it. So if you're somebody that's drinking coffee and eating meat and eating sugar or taking drugs or smoking cigarettes, um, you'd want to reduce those things slowly and eventually eliminate them completely. So slowly you would let go of one thing, like I'm going to stop eating meat and now I'm going to stop eating sugar and now I'm going to cut out the caffeine. Um, And so you would let go of those things over time so that when you start the cleanse on day one, you're mostly eating a a vegetarian diet so that as you transition to the Ayurvedic mono diet, it's not a shock to your body. In other words, the day before the cleanse, don't be like drinking lots of espresso and eating hamburgers and smoking cigarettes and then start the cleanse the next day. You want to prepare well for a cleanse by letting go of sugar, meat, 
wheat, dairy, any kind of drugs and alcohol got to go before you start the cleanse. So that when you start the cleanse, you've already been kind of eating a whole foods vegetarian diet. Then you do the cleanse. How long should you do it? You can do it for three days. You can do it for five days. You can do it for a week. You can do it for two weeks. It's really up to you. You're eating a beautifully balanced diet. So there's no risk in eating this diet for as long as you like. But your body will just tell you when it's naturally start time to start to come off of it. I find for most people, if you've never done this, start with a f- three-day or a five-day and see how it goes. Then coming off, you want to come off kind of the way that you came in, only hopefully when you come off, you're not going to add back any junk. So when I come off, I'm going to start by letting myself have maybe different vegetables that I hadn't been eating I might start adding in half an avocado to the mix, Um, slowly starting to add in new grains that are whole grains, Um, and then eventually adding in a little bit of dairy, a little bit of um, sweets in the sense of fruits. Um, I would just keep the sugar out because you don't really ever need that. Um, And then adding in meat, if that's a part of your diet, would be the last thing. Meat and wheat are some of the heavier things that we can eat really on the planet. And so the cleanse might be five days, but coming off, going off your stuff and coming off the cleanse might take another 10. And so really planning that out, it's just as important the way that you come off of a cleanse as the way that you go into it or the way that you're on it. And so what hopefully will happen is that during the cleanse, you'll realize, oh, I don't want those things. Um, And so you may not add in some of the junky stuff as you come off. As you're cleansing, you are moving toxins, or we call it AMA, out of the system. And remember, we're not only moving physiological toxins, but we're also moving emotional toxins. So don't be surprised that you may have some emotions come up, some old thoughts, some old feelings arise. And this is a good sign that you're doing it right. I hope that this little talk has gotten you interested in Ayurvedic cleansing. If you're still feeling like you're not certain on exactly how to do it, I want you to go to the show notes and click on the links that give a really nice PDF on how to do it at home. I'm also giving you guys a link to products that are going to help you cleanse, including the mung beans, the ghee, the basmati rice, the triphala, and some other really great cleansing herbal products it, just to make it easy on you. Head over there. Um, if this is Ayurveda stuff is something that you're interested in, we have an amazing school that certifies you as an Ayurvedic health coach. So if you want to know more, we have a 300-hour program starting this mid-January 2019, and we still have spots left, although they are filling up. So we're also going to have a link to our Ayurveda school in the show notes. You can head over to theshaktischool.com or katiesilcox.com for all the information about that. We also have a subscriber program where for 18 bucks a month, you get a video class with me, a lecture, and a PDF on a specific topic. And so if you want to practice with me, you want to see me practice, you want to bring me into your home... I have you in my home. And so I would love to have you guys check out katiesilcox.com and you'll see a little link to the Lineage of Love subscription program. Also, we would love to have you subscribe to our podcast. That's how we stay afloat. So please subscribe, whether it be on iTunes or wherever you get your podcast, and it really helps people find our podcast. If you leave us a review, it's super helpful as well share it with your friends, leave us a review. And we're actually doing a little little contest where if you leave us a review, we're going to choose one of you and give you guys a free Ayurveda course. Um, So leave us a review, tell us how much you love us, and you can be possibly a winner. All right, you guys, I hope this has inspired you to get out there and do your own at-home Ayurveda cleanse or head out somewhere and do one with some support. We will be speaking way more, way, way, way more about Ayurvedic cleansing, Tantra, Ayurveda, modern science, and everything related to being healthy, happy, and sexy. See you guys next time. Put <laughs>
Beautiful.